thank you, Mark. I appreciate that introduction. It was uh, very kind of you. And uh, I want to say, first of all, before I get into the Liberty story, uh, I've been to quite a few of these events around the country, and I am uh, very honored and, and pleased to be with all of you today, uh, which I consider uh, the backbone of our country, American patriots that, that do care about our country and what's happening to it. And also, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about what happened at Marriott, what they did to you and what they did to uh, all of you. It was disgraceful. It was, uh, I think, a breach of our free, free speech, uh, right to assemble. And I think we all ought to write the CEO of the Marriott a letter. If he doesn't answer that one, write him another letter. If he doesn't answer that, he write him another letter. Continue writing letters to these people till you let them know that they're not going to trample on your civil rights ever again. We have a right to be here. Right, get, get somebody. Well, first of all, um, I was uh, 20, uh, 20 years old in uh, 1967. I was a uh, third class petty officer in damage control. And uh, we were ordered to leave Abidjan, Africa, uh, about 2 o'clock in the morning to go who knew, who knew where. We didn't have a clue where we were going. Uh, until we got to Rota, Spain, and we picked up uh, three linguists, three marine uh, Russian linguists, and a uh, civilian named Alan Blue. It was a uh, one-night stay. We picked up supplies, and we headed for the Mediterranean. We got on station at approximately uh, 6 o'clock in the morning. At approximately 6.05, Israeli aircraft were circling the ship. We knew they were Israeli aircraft because we could see the Star of David on them. We waved at the pilots, the pilots waved back. We felt very comfortable. There was at least 12 overflights of the ship from 0600 to approximately uh, 11 or 11.30. Our intercept uh, uh, operators on the ship uh, picked up information from the Israelis notifying their base in Haifa that this was an American ship and they identified it as Liberty, AGTR-5, an American ship. And this was uh, passed on and picked up by uh, listing bases in uh, Beirut, Lebanon, uh, at the American Embassy. Uh, it was picked up in Vietnam, believe it or not. Uh, it was picked up in um, Greece. That the Israelis themselves identified us as American. They put us on their war table as an American ship. We were in international waters 12.5 miles off the coast of the Sinai. At, at approximately 1 o'clock, we had a general quarters drill, which is a drill to t test our skills for, at, at that time, it was a chemical drill. We were in chemical suits, and it was hot, believe me. It was a hot, hot, hot day. And the sky was clear. The flag was flying no obstructions. We knew we were, had been identified, and the only word we had we were, you know, would be the Arabs. We thought that would be the only people, but we knew our good friends, the Israelis, were there. If anything happened, we knew we were protected. Uh, before we got into the area, by the way, the captain did ask for a uh, destroyer escort because we were going into a war zone. But we were in international waters, they refused him. They told him that uh, you're flying an American ensign. Uh, the Israelis know you're there. Don't worry about it. 
we secured from General Quarters uh, about oh, 10 minutes to 2. I went up on the forward gun mount. The, the sound powered phones weren't, weren't working, and uh, I was the damage control uh, officer of the forward repair party. So I went to the CIC where the guys to take care of that. And uh, they sent a guy up there by the name of David Skolak to repair the uh, sound powered phones. Now we were in condition three uh, readiness. This is, means the, uh, uh, we had four uh, 50 caliber machine guns on the ship and they were all manned uh, uh, because of uh, condition three. We could see on, on the, on the uh, uh, land black smoke and uh, uh, fires and bombs and things going off. And then at two o'clock, the attack started. Uh, it started with three French Mirage jets. They, they hit every single antenna on that ship, operating antenna. There were 40 of them. And now this, this ship was the most sophisticated ship in the world for, for uh, telecommunications. They hit every antenna on the ship, and we couldn't get a word out to anybody for about 10 minutes. Terry Haldabardier uh, jury-rigged an antenna that had been shut down, the tuner had been shut down. These, these guys were shooting at us with, with uh, heat-seeking missiles. And they took out first all, all the antennas, they took out um, the captain's gig, they took out the uh, uh, whale boat, and uh, they took out 99% uh, of our life rafts. This attack lasted it was about as long as the attack on Pearl Harbor. There were over 820 rocket and cannon holes in the ship. There were approximately 5,000 50 caliber armor piercing bullets in the ship. And they also fired uh, napalm at us. They dropped napalm on the bridge of the ship. As we were trying to get the dead and the wounded off the decks, they would fire at us. The crew of 294, there was 172 wounded, and 34 killed, and since then, probably 50 or 60 of those have passed from their wounds. Uh, about 15 minutes into the attack, we got a word out to the Sixth Fleet. We were under attack by unknown jet aircraft. They had uh, they had colored their planes and marked out the Star of David. There was no markings on the planes. We didn't know who was attacking us. And we called the USS Saratoga and the USS America. Captain Tully launched immediately ready aircraft. Now these were conventional aircraft. They weren't nuclear tipped. And they were, they were on the way to help us. McNamara gets on the, gets on the phone and says, send those planes back, bring them back, bring them back. Now, he, he said to, uh, in the war room, we're not going to uh, uh, attack our ally Israel. Now, we didn't know who was attacking us because they were unmarked planes. How did they know they were, who was attacking us? The USS America sent aircraft out of their planes, uh, off their uh, aircraft carrier. They were nuclear tipped. They were going to incinerate uh, Egypt. McNamara again, he called those planes back. Admiral Geis said, I want to rearm and go to the Liberty's defense. They're still under attack. This is about probably 45 minutes into the attack. With the holes in the ship and uh, the damage that was done, the experts said it had to be at least 12 to 18 aircraft that attacked us. Uh, about uh, 50 minutes, 60 minutes into the attack, uh, here comes three motor torpedo boats. 
and they got in uh, a torpedo mode. There was like a torpedo boat here, one behind it, and one behind it. They had uh, two torpedoes on each boat, uh, six total. They fired five torpedoes, and, and one didn't go off. And five torpedoes came at us at one time. Two went aft. I believe uh, one went forward, and the other I don't know where it went. But I do, I do know where the last one went. It hit in the, in the uh, research bases below the waterline, instantly blowing to bits 25 American sailors. The impact of the torpedo was so great, it picked the ship completely up out of the water. And it, it just went back down. The ship was just like weeping. It was hurt so bad. We started listing and listing and listing, and I thought the ship was going to roll over, but it didn't. It, it started to s stabilize. Uh, I was ordered to the bridge to help put out fires, and I, we didn't have any water pressure because they put holes in most of our, uh, our fire hoses. Besides that, our pumps weren't working properly. So we, did, we couldn't pump as much water as we needed. We were basically just dead in the water. Got to the bridge, had two uh, uh, CO2 bottles, and trying to put out the napalm, and it was impossible. You couldn't put that stuff out. It, it, it just jelly didn't keep on burning. And, and I'll never forget, I looked over at the helmsman. He was a very good friend of mine. His name was Francis Brown. Uh, I met him when I first got aboard the ship in 1965. We were good buddies. We used to play pool together and everything like that. And he was one of the most well-liked men aboard the ship. And I looked at him as I was getting ready to go down the passageway and get another CO2 bottle. I looked directly in his eyes, and he looked at me and didn't say a word, and he didn't say a word. I went back down got what CO2 bottles I could. I came back up and I got on the bridge, the deck, and there was blood all over and I flew up, slipped and fell on my back. And it was Francis Brown's blood. A uh, uh, 50 caliber bullet came in and, and blew off the back of his head. The captain at that time had been injured uh, there were still a de dead and wounded on the, on the main deck uh, and on the second level. The 50-gallon ca cans of uh, gasoline we had uh, on, on the ship, they were on fire, they were burning. And the torpedo boats would circle the ship and shoot at our firefighters and stretcher bearers. They wanted us all dead, they wanted us all murdered. Our government abandoned us when we needed them the most 40 years ago, and they abandoned us. They're still abandoning us to this, to this day. Uh, this government is, uh, was stabbed in the back by the government of Israel, and our gov government helped put a knife in their own back. And whenever Israel wants something, all they got to do is just twist that knife a little bit more, and they get what they want. I remember talking to Admiral Moore. He was one of our greatest supporters on this issue. He told me, Phil, he says, during the Yom Kippur War, the ambassador of Israel came to me. He was a Joint Chiefs of Staff then. He says, Phil, he says, I need this from you, and I need this from you, and I need this from you. He says, well, I can't give you all that. He says, we, I, we need it for other things, for Vietnam or whatever. And uh, he says, don't you worry about the Congress. You just get what I want. And he was ordered the next day to give the Israelis anything they wanted, taking away from our fighting men. And uh, two days after that, or the, the next morning, the USS America and the USS Davis and the USS Massey got to us 18 hours after the attack. So they, they left us out there. They, could, they didn't even send a Piper Cub to see how we were doing. I mean, they could have sent at least one airplane to give us a uh, direction. Our compasses were out. We had n nothing. We were sailing by the stars. 
but our country left us there. They made the decision, hopefully, they thought we were going to break up in the middle of the night and all of us die. But we thought the Israelis were going to come back and get us, but uh, they didn't because the, the word was out. We knew who attacked us. The, uh, about 15 minutes after the torpedo boats left, uh, they sent two helicopters uh, with commandos in them, ready to board our ship to finish us off. They circled the ship, one got close to the Vauxhall, and I was looking him right in the eyeball. And he was looking at me, and I went, just like that. And he, and he re re replied with the same finger. But they did not board our ship. Uh, I'd like to say, the next day, the Master came by, the Davis came by. They got the dead and the wounded off, uh, and the most seriously wounded. So they said, go to Malta, which was a seven-day trip from where we were to Malta. And they could have sent us to Crete, but it was only three days. Why they did that, I don't know. But the U.S. Papago was behind us, a fleet tug, and they were picking up papers, pieces of bodies. There were six bodies that floated out they never did find. And there was a mass grave in Arlington uh, honoring uh, their sacrifice. I was ordered by an Admiral Kidd uh, when he came aboard our ship. I told him what, what he did. He got four or five of us in a group. He took off his stars. This, this was in uh, sick bay at the time. I, re I remember he threw them on the table. It was a stainless steel table, and they th it rang. And he says, you guys talk to me just like, you know, I'm a regular sailor. Tell us what happened, what you saw, did you see any markings, so on and so forth. We told him exactly what we saw. He put his stars back on. He says, now I'm my admiral again. And I'm telling you, if you ever breathe a, breathe a word to this, to your parents, to the press, to your shipmates, to anybody, I'll make sure you either go to prison or worse. And everybody else knew what worse meant. And then we were briefed by the CIA and the National Security Agency never to say a word about it. And I, and I didn't for 20 years. I was in a hole. I was in a, a, a depression you couldn't believe. And then a book came out called Assault on the Liberty, written by James Ennis. Read the book, understood that other people besides myself, I thought I was the only one that felt that way. But I wasn't. But uh, the, uh, the uh, Israeli government and our government, uh, they might as well have fired the bullets at, at all, all of you sitting right here, because when they attack one American, they attack us all. I have, uh, I have two sons. Bryce is uh, my oldest son. Uh, he's in the United States Army Ranger Special Forces. My other son, Shane, he's in the United States Navy SEALs. Why they joined the military, I don't know, after what I told them. And I said, listen, you're, the only people you're going to war for is Israel. And uh, that's who you're going to be fighting for. And that's who you're going to be dying for. But they're, I mean, they're grown men. They want to do what they're going to do. I couldn't talk them out of it. But anyway, that's, that's, that's the way I feel. But the Liberty has made a footprint. They made a footprint on the, uh, on, on the uh, Middle East 40 years ago, and that footprint is not erased yet. If the American public knew what Israel did to this American ship, they would be outraged. They would, uh, uh, our passion, attachment for Israel would not very, be uh, passionate very long. We, th th we'd be done with them. The American public wouldn't stand for it. And, and the conspiracy, it goes on and on after each president, each Congress. They all know the truth. We get uh, secret documents. Uh, they don't mean anything. They're all blacked out. I get the same documents every year. I'm on their list. They send me the same documents. They might, they might add one word, an I or an A, but the rest of it's all blacked out. So uh, I don't know what to, uh, how to get the word out other, by, other than talking to people like you, which I do quite often. 
Uh, it's almost useless to write your Congress, but if you do, it does let them know you're still there. Uh, the uh, uh, Liberty story will be, real, will be repeated. Uh, I think it was repeated when the barracks were blown up in Beirut, and I think it was done by our friends with skull caps, too. I think they killed them all to get us out of there. Uh, that's my own personal opinion. I have nothing to back it up with, but that's just what I believe. Uh, the uh, the uh, other thing I wanted to get across was that uh, the cover-up is probably what is going to break the back of Israel more than the attack, because the cover-up consists of the United States and Israel in conjunction as a conspiracy and that's the only way we're going to take our country back is get the truth out and I think the is attack on our ship I personally believe that God saved us because nobody else was there to help us he held that ship up and it was by all means supposed to sink every engineer everybody we talked to said there's no way that ship should have make it because it was it was I mean, broken all the way down. The keel, the, the keel was completely broken. And it, we got it into Malta, stayed there a month. They made the ship look like brand new, patched all the holes up, and it, uh, we brought it back to States. There was uh, myself and about 15 other guys, a uh, skeleton crew, uh, brought the ship back to uh, Little Creek, Virginia. I stayed aboard the Liberty until uh, December the 12th, uh, 1967. I was discharged. Uh, stayed out of the Navy for about a year. I went back in for two more years. And I thought maybe that would uh, change my attitude, but uh, I couldn't, uh, couldn't take it anymore, so I got out. But uh, that, that's basically it. It's, it's a true story. Uh, they got by with cold-blooded murder, and, and nobody should get by with murder, not even Israel. And that's just the way it is. So uh, if you have any questions, I'd like to answer a few questions. If not, I'll... Well, uh, they wanted to sink as fast and blame it on Egypt. And uh, uh, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't be fighting in Iraq right now if we had sunk. Because Israel and the United States would have owned all the Middle East. The Russians wouldn't have gone against us on that one. I mean, uh, the, the Russians were there and told us, you know, don't get involved in this. But uh, you, you sink an American ship, uh, the Egyptians sink an American ship, what are you going to do? What was the role of Admiral I'm sorry? What was the role of Admiral McCain? Oh, very good question. Admiral McCain. I'm sorry? Oh, okay, yes. Uh, what was the role of uh, Admiral uh, McCain? Uh, well, he was, he was our boss. Uh, uh, he was the uh, Europe uh, commander of the Sixth Fleet. And uh, he ordered uh, Admiral Kidd to have this uh, uh, investigation, Board of Inquiry, done within one week. And that's, that was impossible. This, this investigation should, should have taken at least a year. One of the lead investigators on it, Ward Boston, later came out and said, yeah, it's a sham. We were ordered to lie. Uh, it's a cover-up. Uh, everybody knows it's a cover-up. Uh, Admiral McCain, Senator McCain's son or dad, ordered, uh, ordered him to uh, cover it up. And it's, and it's been covered up to, to this day. And I've written, I've written to McCain before, and and he doesn't want to hear about it uh, for sure. But uh, uh, that was his role as, as uh, a part of the cover-up. But uh, Ward Boston and Admiral Soaring, uh, he he was a judge advocate general. Uh, he supports us. He says, yeah, it was a cover-up, and uh, we've got uh, tons and tons of people that support us. But it doesn't do any good. I was in the State Department giving a speech, or ready to give a speech, and the moderator at that time cut me off. I was there for about two hours, and 
I was at the microphone, and he said the conference is over. Click, and that was it. And uh, that's when they had a State Department that said it was a mistaken identity. We've looked at this, and we've looked at this, and we've looked at this. At that time, I was with the president of the association, and, uh, and that's why I was there. But uh, I've tried everything I know on God's green earth to get this story out, and so have the other survivors. Uh, and it's ruined many lives. Uh, it's destroyed a lot of lives, parents, brothers, aunts, uncles. Uh, it's just, it's a terrible situation. But uh, if they get by it once, they'll get by with it again. Y yes? You know, I really apologize. I can't. Why don't you come here closer? I really can't hear you. Uh, There, there, there was no explanation ever made. There, uh, basically, they just told us to shut up. And uh, but we, we knew what we knew what was up. Uh, you know, it, it took me a few years to figure it out. But uh, uh, they didn't want us talking about it. And uh, uh, that's that's just basically it. Like I say, I didn't talk about it for 20 years. I was afraid to. And uh, but uh, it's. Uh, it's just been a part of my life that uh, I don't think that anybody should have to go through. No, none of your sons or brothers or daughters or anybody, I hope, I hope that uh, they never have to go through anything like that. Um, I was proud of my service uh, in, the, in the Navy, and I still am. I'm, I'm not really proud of my country for what they did to us, though. Yeah, well, we're proud of you, Phil. Well, well, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Yes. There was a dramatization of the attack on the USS Liberty on national public radio in the mid 1970s. It was just guns shooting, guys talking. It was in the 1970s, and I, it was national public radio, and I believe it was out of Wisconsin, but I heard it in Oakland, California. I couldn't believe it that it was there. Right. Right, absolutely. And there's, there's some good films out, too, uh, uh, Dead in the Water and uh, Loss of Liberty. Can I ask a question? Yes. <clears throat> you said that your ship was taken to Malta, which is a British port. So with the British Navy, did they know the Royal Navy about what happened to you? Uh, when, we, when we got in Malta? Yeah, the, I mean, the Royal Navy must have known what happened to your ship because you took it to Malta, right? Right. We took it to Malta and went in a dry dock. Uh, nothing, nothing. The, the only thing I remember doing with the Brits, we'd uh, go to the bar and we'd fight each other. <laughs> we won a couple. <laughs> but uh, anyway, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your time. I appreciate it very much. Uh, the congressmen and senators uh, uh, never have given us any support. We were supposed to have a congressman there, uh, but at the last minute he had something else he had to do. And he, uh, uh, his name escapes me right now, but he's running for president. What about Cynthia McKinney? Didn't she stick up for you? I'm sorry? Cynthia McKinney, didn't she? Cynthia McKinney. 
I'm sorry? Cynthia McKinney. Cynthia. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, she's Cynthia McKinney. She's a, uh, a, uh, a nice gal. I've talked to her several times. Uh, and she supported us, but she got voted out of office for supporting us, and then she got back into office, then she got voted out again. And uh, uh, a lot of Israeli money went into the other side to defeat her. But she's a, she's a real uh, southern uh, nice lady, and uh, I've talked to her several times. Paul Finley. Pardon me? Paul Finley. Oh, yeah, Paul Finley. He's, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, he, uh, did you know that on YouTube.com, on a website called Stranger Than Fiction, which um, uh, suggests the Israeli involvement in 9-11, also has maybe a half-hour video about the attack on the Liberty. And when I saw it, in, in addition to like all these other hours of videos, I, I couldn't believe that this was true until I'm meeting you right now. Otherwise, I would have thought that was fake. You know, someone just, you know, put it up. But there, it is on YouTube. It's called The Attack of the Liberty, Stranger Than Fiction. And you'll see other videos. Right. I'm very happy to meet you to know that the truth is going to come out of it. I yeah. Think. There, it, uh, it, it's, it is hard to believe. I know for a lot of people to, to, to believe it. But it, it, it is true. And, uh, and you said you saw it on YouTube? Yeah. yeah. I've, I've seen the same one. They, McNamara and Johnson, uh, in fact, uh, Johnson said he didn't care if the, if, if the whole ship sank and he lost all the sailors aboard. He was not going to embarrass his ally Israel. McNamara is 91 right now, and he has no recollection of the USS Liberty. He says he can't remember what happened that day. But uh, there's recordings of him on tape ordering the jets back. And... Uh, I might add that, that, that several, several of the pilots uh, that uh, went off of the uh, Saratoga, uh, when they got out, out of their airplanes, they were so angry, they, they took off their, their flight helmets and threw them on the deck, and uh, one of them blew off the side uh, and broke in half. Yes? Operation Sinai? And yeah, front light uh, 615. That uh, uh, was a, um, I understand, a backup plan uh, uh, that was uh, hatched, uh, uh, I believe, by Russia or, or some, some, somebody in that area. I'm, it, it was a backup plan uh, by the U.S.'s Amberjack. Uh, there was a sub there, by the way, too, an American sub that filmed it, that, that filmed the attack, uh, the USS Amberjack, and, and they have that film, but uh, nobody can get it. But anyway, I'll, I'll let me know, leave this you guys man alone. This man has a question. This yes. man has a question. Uh, yes, I want to say something on um, history. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, I just want to say uh, that. In the 2003, an American girl got killed. Her name is Rachel Corey. And uh, she, she was killed deliberately by, by the Israeli army, and, and her parents ordered an investigation, and, and, uh, and the congressman uh, looked at the congressman, and the Jewish lobby jumped in, and the whole thing got yeah, ended, ended that. up. So. I remember that. Yeah, she was killed shot back, I believe. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Back, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the and the congress just <coughs> microphone and did the same thing there. Well, I guess well, we better go. I know it's late. I'm sorry. If we'd have sunk, if, if we'd have sunk, the whole Middle East would be uh, would be completely different right now. Like I say, we wouldn't be in Iraq right now. Israel and the United States, uh, we'd have Empire State buildings over there. They would have. That was the plan. That, 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 to sink as fast and blame, blame it on somebody else. Thank you all very much.